Hello everyone. So in this video, I kind of wanted to talk about how to, I guess, diversify your product selection or your products. I, for one, have done practically everything that you could do in financial services. I have my property and casualty license, my life and health insurance license. I have a series seven and a series 66, which means that I can sell wrap accounts, which is investment wrap accounts. I can sell stocks and products or at least uh, collect commission on it. I can sell car insurance, homeowners insurance, general liability insurance, life insurance, major medical insurance. I have my ACA compliant or my ACA certification, my AHIP certification. So I can pretty much do everything. But is that a wise or a good idea? And I think it's a good idea if you have interest in it and you want to do it. So here's what I mean by that. And I always say that because in my head, things make sense. But a lot of times when I talk to people, they have no idea what I'm talking about. So what I mean is that if you're thinking, oh, you know, maybe I should do this because the grass is greener on this side. It's got to be easier. I suggest, as long as it doesn't waste a lot of your time and your life, try it, right? Insurance license, all these licensing tests, whatever. If you're someone like myself who can take tests off, uh, relatively easily, well then why not get the license and then go? So that's what I did. I found that property and casualty insurance has gotta be one of the worst things in the world to sell if you're trying to make money. Property and casualty insurance, you have a lot of work to do because there really is no liaison except yourself when trying to make these more complicated general liability policies, and business owner policies, and really drilling down homeowner insurance policy that's not just like buying something off the internet. And if that's the case, a lot of times buying it off the internet um, ultimately would save the, the client uh, more money because they cut out the middleman, right? Um, so I don't do that. I don't like to do that. Life insurance. Life insurance is a very niche product. I, think, I guess if you were really into it, you could really sell it. Um, if that was your primary focus and your primary audience and your primary kind of uh, target demographic. But I only really sell life insurance to people who actually um, actually want it. So that, what that means is they come to me and they get it from me. And I can design a policy. I'm very good at the kind of operational protocol parts of life insurance as far as underwriting, things of that nature, simply because I'm very interested in it. Um, but I don't outright market for it. That's not where any of really any of my income comes from. Uh, most of my income comes from Medicare. So oh, well, one more step, we talk about the investments and things. So the investment world is really hard to to work, especially if you're coming about it like me. So I'm the type of personality, as you may already know, based on this channel and perhaps what I've been talking about, I'm a very operational focused and efficiency focused individual. So if I see an inefficiency in the in what I'm what's going on, I like to fish that out. And to be honest, there is a huge inefficiency in the management of money at the under $5 million level. So unless you have at least $5 million to invest, investing with a, a financial planner or a financial advisor or your local person at wherever it is, Merrill Lynch, Schwab, wherever, it's not doesn't really make sense unless you're using them as like a responsibility or an accountability kind of coach. Because at the level below five million, or maybe two million if you are if you have a high income level, like if you're making over a quarter million a year, two million dollars is enough to kind of get to the accredited point where having a financial plan will give you access to a lot of things that you wouldn't be able to access in another situation. So if you have less than that, the only reason you really need a financial planner is someone to kind of keep you invested, keep you saving money, keep you in line with your achieving your financial goals. Other than that, they're not really that useful. And to me, I don't like that. 
I did not want to be a babysitter and I did not want to be somebody who just said when the going gets tough we lock down because we can buy at lower prices that is not that is not what I wanted my job to be and therefore I no longer do that either so there's a lot of things that I have done that I no longer do at all because I simply believe it is not worth my time and I do things that are worth my time and then I specialize in the things that are worth my time so back to the topic at hand should you do something or you know sell other things or whatever and the answer is gonna be you should try you should try and you might like it and you might enjoy doing it you might enjoy doing this whatever it is insurance financial product sales and doing something else that's okay you know it's okay to have more than one thing that you do who said we only have to do one thing you could do multiple things um, but you just have to choose the thing that's gonna make you money because the all the number one thing that a job is for is to make money okay you can say that your passion is what drives you or whatever that to me is a very poor reason to get a job because at the end of the day very few people love work to the point where they would do it for free very few people not even me okay so if you are going to find a job that you like and you or at least can tolerate right that's kind of where it is it's whatever you do that you can tolerate you find that you figure out if there's a way to make to add so much value to what you're doing that you can charge a lot more for your time but the value you give is still worth it okay so I like to think about that as if we exchange time for money we're ultimately exchanging the value of our time for money if we can pack down value so far like that's so valuable that people are willing to pay money for it whatever we pack package down for them a book per se a course or a product and we can sell that at scale then we are no longer working with the time variable being the main driver we're working with the value variable and that's why I like financial products because in financial products I can help someone with something and I might get paid a thousand dollars but all the research and all my my value for that thousand dollars I can condense into an hour sometimes I can even condense it into like 15 minutes if someone watches the videos that I have out and all the, the books that I have that I write and all those things if they can just use all those things then my value which I've already done and devoted time for once will be able to produce more and more value for the people and thus provide me with money okay, so that's that's how I kind of think about things when you're looking to expand your business okay so if you're looking to expand your business ask yourself those things like is it gonna make enough money how long is it gonna take and is it worth my time investment because time is the only true asset that everybody has and I mean without it I mean what are we really even doing here if we're not thinking about that anyway I hope this helps you guys somehow uh, it's, it's a busy time I just get asked a lot if they should people should add Medicare to their portfolio or if they should add other types of products to their portfolio and I always say well it depends if it's gonna make you enough money for you to spend the time learning about it and of course if you wanted to try it try it if you don't like it leave it I, mean, I have so many things that I have the uh, degree for or license for that I don't even use so the loss because if I tried to pursue it I probably lose even more time which would be stupid right anyway do good things I'll see you in the next video bye now